The Mahasiddha Tilopa, the great renunciate. The bird that settles on the face of Mount Maru appears to be made of gold. The sage who knows all as pure potential leaves the material world for the Buddha fields of bliss. The great sage Tilopa was priest to the king of Vishnugar. He received the princely sum of 500 gold sovereigns each day for his offices and for teaching the Buddha's doctrines to his innumerable disciples. Yet he was very uneasy and distracted in his work. My life is meaningless, he would think to himself. Why continue here? He tried to resign, but his resignation was refused, and his students always obstructed him, imploring him to remain. Finally, he decided to escape. He changed his monastic robes for tattered rags and left this note in his room. I will never return. Do not attempt to follow me. Then he fled into the night. Tilopa walked to Kanchi and took up residence in the town's cremation ground. He lived there for some time, practicing his sadhana and begging food in the town. After he had met Naropa on the road, his disciple begged for him and served him in whatever way he could. He continued to practice his sadhana, and after many years the defilements of his mind were eradicated, and he attained Mahamudra Siddhi. In the paradise of the gods he ate sumptuously and was served with honor, and he gained siddhis of body, speech, and mind. He became universally renowned as a yogin Tilopa, and setting innumerable beings on the path, he worked selflessly for others. He rose into the Dakini's paradise. <coughs> Tilopa is an extremely enigmatic figure, an elusive, as elusive as he is renowned in his lineage. Most of the knowledge we have of him is derived from Naropa's legends, and to Naropa he was abstract and insubstantial as the nature of his own mind. A tabula rasa to be defined according to our need. <clears throat> Tilopa appeared not to suffer fools lightly, to have cared for nothing either moral, uh, to care nothing for either moral or social convention, and to have practiced what he preached uncompromisingly. Almost contemptuous of humanistic values, he seemed to have demanded from his disciples an utterly unbiased and impartial mind, above all capable of the vision of indeterminate ultimate reality. In his Song of Realization, the key phrase that indicates the substance of such vision is pure potential. He sees all things as pure potential, and what begins as pure potential cannot become anything other than that. And this is experientially confirmed in the vision of all things as kinetic space, a ceaseless panorama of transforming illusion devoid of any substantiality whatsoever. Thus, the material world becomes Buddha fields of Shukavati, pure lands of pure pleasure, and the beings existing in this pure land like the golden bird on the golden slopes of Mount Meru, naturally partake of the nature of space. To his lineage, Tulopa personifies a one-pointed, unswerving fidelity to that end, and to the induction of others into that vision. The nearest Naropa comes to substantiating or humanizing his guru is to describe Tilopa as a dark man dressed in cotton trousers, his hair knotted in a tuft, and with protruding bloodshot eyes. The Tibetans like to depict Tilopa as a yogin Sita with his hair not, with a hair knot, carrying the fish that identifies him. The fish is the fish of spirituality, but more precisely, the fish of the Pancha Makara in the Gana Chakra rite that symbolizes the senses and control thereof. <coughs> control thereof. Control implies complete detachment from the objects of the senses, and also fundamentally control of the psychic energies. Although Naropa took a long time to realize it, from the beginning his guru was a state of mind, specifically non-discrimination, and in general a pure awareness of all phenomena and noumena. Thus, in his remarks about his guru, Naropa tells us more about himself than the human being Tilopa. Naropa was the preeminent disciple who was capable of visualizing his guru as a metaphysical plane of experience, and Tilopa was the utterly selfless guru who was able to demand that vision from a disciple. In its shortest and purest form, Tantric Sadhana demands a Buddha's responses from the disciple from the moment of his initiation. And it was this path that Tilopa forced Naropa to follow. Thus, Naropa's progress along the path with occasional glorious glimpses of his guru in his peak experiences, each glimpse followed by thoughts 
uh, by troughs of ignorance and despair. A pattern much more like the lived experience, uh, lived experience than a gradual, slow but steady progress through the stages of the path. As Naropa was Tilopa's only known disciple, and our only source of information about the Guru, it is clear why we know so little about him. Historiography Our uninformative legend does not mention how Tilopa was initiated. He certainly had no major Siddha Guru. In his history, Taranatha does not mention Tilopa at all. The Tibetan lineages show that he took the Guya Samaja initiation from Nagarjuna's disciple Nagabodhi. This must have been an initiation through vision. He received his Samvara initiations from Vijayapada and or Vinayapada and or Vinapada and from Kush Kushalapa. Padrapa gave him the Hevadra initiation. The Mother Tantras were certainly Tilopa's path. The Kala Chakra Tantra also came through Vijayapada, but, has been, but it has been suggested that Tilopa is Kala Chakrapada in the Kala Chakra Tantra lineage. This dubious proposition is based upon the arbitrary identification of Tilopa with Silupa. Could the preeminent renunciate Tilopa, who taught only one disciple and wrote nothing of great importance, have been the academic commentator with many disciples who was Kala Chakrapada Sr.? It is only possible if Tilopa was a Nalanda Pandita before his renunciation. A final deficiency in our Naropa Tilopa legends is the implication that Tilopa did not attain Mahamudra Siddhi until the end of Naropa's 12-year waiting sadhana. It is improbable that Tilopa's irascible treatment of, a, of his disciple was a defense against the importunate Naropa begging precepts before his guru had realized the meaning of his own sadhana. Certainly Naropa's biography implies that Tilopa was a realized siddha at the start of Naropa's quest. If Naropa lived from AD 1016 to 1100, Tilopa would have been born during the second half of the 10th century, living through the first half of the 11th. Naropa's biography gives AD 1069 as the year of Tilopa's death. Others have claimed he died 30 years earlier. The variants of Tilopa's name, Tilop, Tilopa, Tilipa, Tilopa, Telopa, um, Tili Kapada and Tilopa are derived from the word til, sesame seed, and the Tibetans render his name as the oil presser or oil seller. Epithets that could, could describe his trade, but which might also refer to a metaphor for his yoga. Dilipa is the oil pressing siddha. Lastly, the text Bigunagara, where Tilopa served the, uh, the king, must be the Vishnugar, where Naropa sought his guru. Vishnugar uh, was a name on the map of the Siddhas India in contemporary southern western Bengal.